Hello and welcome to our report from this last plenary session of the European Parliament before the elections in June. Some of this week's highlights. New rules to ensure bank solvency and improve auditing. Over 1 billion euros in support for rural areas. Socialists and Liberals delay new legislation protecting internet consumers. One of the most important pieces of legislation adopted in Parliament this week creates new rules to prevent a repeat of the mistakes that led to the financial crisis. The update of the so-called Capital Requirements Directive seeks to improve supervision and risk management in the banking sector. The Capital Requirements Directive has been updated by the adoption of two important reports that aim to ensure the solvency of financial institutions. Tightening regulations in the financial industry has always been a priority of the EPPED group, even before the onset of the crisis that made its way to Europe from the United States. A report by EPPED Vice Chairman Otmar Karas on capital requirements sets clear rules to prevent situations of bankruptcy, particularly to those witnessed over the past months. All financial institutions offering credit will be closely monitored as to their capacity to fulfil their obligations to their clients at any time. As a result of the new legislation, banking groups that operate in several EU countries will be restricted in lending beyond a certain limit. The supervision of cross-border banking groups will improve, as will risk management procedures. In plenary, Otmar Karas undermined the importance of the directive. Credit can only be given further, or passed on, if the person who receives the credit in the first place has his books in order. We talked about more than the 5% threshold, but we also requested the national central banks to examine whether an increase is meaningful. With the Commission, we have agreed to review by the end of the year, taking into account international developments. A clear signal to the market, I would say. People should be more careful. We need more transparency and better control. The approval of a second report by German MEP Carsten Friedrich Hoppenstedt created a new community programme to support specific activities in the field of financial services, financial reporting and auditing. The financial crisis has highlighted the need to strengthen supervisory convergence and cooperation at the EU level. Speaking in plenary, Hoppenstedt emphasised the importance of the legislation. Good supervision should exist in all 27 member states. We need to optimise the financial and regulatory structures. And we need funding for this. We need to solve this crisis today. And that is precisely what we can do through this joint programme for the support of certain activities in the area of financial services and the financial reporting and auditing. Rural communities can often be especially vulnerable in difficult times, with the economic downturn putting them at greater risk of exclusion. A report debated in plenary this week allocated funds to supporting development of rural areas during the crisis. When European leaders met in Brussels last December, they agreed on a recovery plan for the European economy. The plan, equivalent to 1.5% of European GDP, or 200 billion euros, coordinates efforts undertaken by member states and by the European Union to maximise their effect. Part of the money set aside for the recovery plan was allocated to rural development. Parliament has now debated how to best make use of this money, which amounts to more than 1 billion euros. Bulgarian MEP Petya Stavrova is responsible for the report, which focuses on internet broadband development and the challenges of the so-called health check of the EU's agricultural policy, a reform launched some years ago. Today, in the European Parliament, we initiate an important debate about additional funding from the EU budget concerning the EU rural regions in the community, which will enable them to overcome the consequences of the economic crisis. We need to highlight that a 1.02 billion euro will support the EU agrarian sector in this tough moment. I believe that farmers and citizens from rural regions will understand this crucial message about the provision of financial resource for financial support. Stavriva wants to make money available more quickly. 
Amongst other measures in her report, she proposes allowing member states to use funds for loans and credit guarantees, which would enable rural stakeholders to launch investments in difficult times. Each country will receive funding for broadband internet and for coping with the new challenges established by the regular review of the CAP for 2008. I believe that the investment in internet inter infrastructure, restructuring the milk sector, renewable energy sources, protection and biodiversity of water sources are the key to the solution of a great deal of the problems in these areas and create alternatives for the people living there. Ms. Stavrova underlined the importance of sending a clear message to European citizens, especially those living in rural areas. They have the support of the European Union. A series of telecoms reports regulating internet service providers and protecting consumer rights will not enter into force. In a surprise vote, the package was rejected by Liberal and Socialist MEPs who could have been voting in a French Parliament against a French government bill. Malcolm Harbour, EPP ED Group spokesperson, explains what happened in plenary. Well, this was a, a second reading that we had today, and it's not just about the internet, it's about uh, the whole of the electronic communications sector and it's a reform of the, the key legislation that's been in place since 2001, but to bring it up to date to the modern conditions. So essentially we had on the table a package of amendments that were agreed, and if Parliament had accepted every single amendment today, the whole package would be moving into law within the next month or so. So in other words, we would have really delivered great benefits for the European economy. We're looking for new investment in new services, new rights for consumers, new ways to use radio spectrum, a whole lot of other areas. Now, unfortunately, what's happened is that um, a group of very determined people on the internet have essentially hijacked the debate around the French law on copyright, which is nothing to do with this proposal. Who were them? Well, they come from many countries. The problem, though, in this case is that the particular issue that they cited on, which is to do with the French law on copyright, concerns the fact that the French government um, is proposing, to, in dealing with copyright, to cut people's internet access if they're found to be at downloading illicit copyright material. Now, what the amendment on the table that was voted in says um, is that uh, you can only cut someone's internet access with the prior approval of a judge. Yes. Now, that's what they wanted to get in. The problem with that is that it's not part of the internet package and it's also not part of European law. It's so, French law that decides that and that imposes a condition on all governments because Parliament rejected that compromise in favour of this other amendment that, Parliament, that the Council does not agree with the proposal. It will go into conciliation and the whole package will be delayed for up to six months. So these members of the European Parliament, they had also a political agenda behind them. Well, I, yeah. They're coming from some political groups. From uh, Yes, I mean, clearly, um, there were, there, uh, there, in the end, what happened was that the Socialists and Liberals predominantly and the Greens uh, voted in favour of this amendment. And, of course, in France, there's been a very big campaign running, yeah. and so it's part of, a, part of the election campaign. But it's also happened in other countries, in Poland and in Finland as well. For more information on the week's highlights, visit our website, epp-ed.eu. We look forward to bringing you our next report from the first plenary session of the new parliamentary term in July. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.